So this is what is meant when it says the house always wins. So first, let's take a look at something like roulette. What I've done here is I've simulated a bunch of wealth paths of playing roulette from the perspective of the casino. So anytime you make a bet in roulette, there's a fixed payout structure, but of course it's not purely 50-50. You still have the zeros. So in this case, if you're to simulate the wealth from the casino's perspective, these are a bunch of different potential outcomes. So you can see five sample paths here. You have this blue and gold path, which accumulate a lot more wealth relative to this green and pink path. And even in this case, if you take a look at the green path, the casino actually lost money, even though it has this edge. The theoretical edge is plotted as a red dashed line. So this is what is meant when it says the house always wins. This is why, because this is a thousand games, the casino in the worst path that was generated from this simulation is almost net zero, where its best path, it's up quite a significant amount over the theoretical value. So these games of chance, they are in favor of the house. If you are a player playing these games of chance, you're gambling on an outcome where if you iteratively play this game, you are essentially destined to lose all of your money. And that's because the house has this theoretical edge. So over time, you're going to just accumulate loss until you eventually run out of money. Whereas the house, if it was able to play indefinitely or extend itself credit, it would theoretically never run out of money from this perspective. So this is why gambling tends to have negative connotations and rightfully so, because if I choose to engage in roulette and I continue to play, eventually I'm gonna run out of money unless I choose to stop at some sort of threshold, but that turns into the gambler's ruin problem. 